lost a battle. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. The I am that I am. The unquestionable God. The unchangeable changer. What a mighty God we serve. Lord we bless your name in this place. There is no one like you. The one who is seated in heaven and the head is his footstool. We serve a mighty God. There is none like him. He is worthy of our praise. He covers himself with light as a garment. He dwells in an unapproachable light. What a mighty God we serve. He is a covenant keeping God. To him be all the glory, honor, and adoration. Glorious in holiness. Fearful in praise. And he's always doing wonders. That is the God we serve. That is the God we worship. Father, we lift you up. We exalt you. We glorify your name. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you know you are here for your covenant of blessing, can I hear you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Antolia Raboje Gede Bragada Yandere Bobo Bobo Shandaya Maraboche Ketendere Moshande Geda Yandere Moshandaya Maramore Kete Yegede Yandere Moshandaya You are the miracle walking on the Father, we worship you. We bow before you, Lord. We declare there is none like unto you. Mighty man of war. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for what to describe. Our Father, our God, our rock, our shield, our hope, and our confidence. We exalt your wonderful name. Who is there like unto you? In heaven or not and beneath the earth. We acknowledge your greatness. 
Thank you, Abba Father. Glory be to your name forevermore. Glory be to your name forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. In Jesus' powerful name, we have worship. Let the person that is expecting the miracle tonight shout a bigger and a better. Hey! The Bible declared to us in Psalm 47, verse number 1. It said, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. The shout inside is the wind inside. Clap your hand. Clap your hand. Shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. allow you to have your seat. You know, in Revelations 1, in five, verse, verse number 5 and number 6, the Bible says, not only has Jesus washed us clean with his blood, he has also presented us as king and priest, even to his father. You know, I am a king before the Almighty God. I'm a priest that Jesus has presented. So are you. And I want you to tell your neighbor, Your Excellency, please be seated. Come on, go ahead. Tell your neighbor, Your Excellency, please be seated. Amen. Praise God. And for somebody here, God brought somebody all the way from Nigeria. Your miracle is here. Yeah. With, with every form of humility and every form of honor, I want to bring to the pulpit my father in the Lord, Pastor Peter Olawale. Please, can we all rise as we give honor to whom honor is due? Is that all you can do? Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, you are the man of war. Your message and your And bless the name of the Lord tonight. Magnify the only one who is I am that I am. The ever constant, the ever faithful God. He is here right now to fulfill his purpose in your lives. He's a covenant keeping God. Go ahead and bless his holy name. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Yes, Lord. Marikan la raba kosanda ya baba. Magnify the Lord. Let us magnify the Lord. The Lord is able. Let us magnify the Lord. 
the Lord disable. Magnify the Lord tonight. Let us magnify the Lord. The Lord is faithful. Magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the, the Lord. The Lord is faithful. I just want you to. Begin to let God know that you are here for a purpose. That you are not just here because you've been invited or a pastor has told you to come. You have a particular destiny to fulfill. You want the Almighty God Himself to take you to the next level. You want the Lord to do something that is going to activate what is called the fulfillment of your destiny during this weekend. Go ahead and begin to thank God. Register your whole name now. Let God know that you are here for a purpose. That you are not here tonight as usual, but you are here to have a destiny with your maker. You are here that the almighty God himself will take you to the next level of your life and destiny. That after this particular weekend, it will be said concerning you that truly the Lord has met with you. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' my fellow's name we pray. Father, God, no meeting can take place without your approval. That we are here today simply because it has been said to it, even before we were born. So I want to thank you for gathering us together for a purpose, a purpose that had to do with your very will in our lives. I understand that your children are here from different cities. Some of them, they've driven to this place of a journey that is more than an hour just because they know that by the time they are here, <laughs> they will be blessed. And your word says, there is a hand indeed and the expectation of the righteous are not be cut off. I pray, Lord, that today you will showcase your supremacy. You will demonstrate your almightiness. Amen. You will smile on us. Amen. Daddy, smile on us. Amen. During this weekend, let our life into the journey of destiny begin. Amen. And whatever is that aspect of our life that will require your intervention, intervene in Jesus' name. Amen. End of your children that is down, let there be a lifting. Yeah. In the place of barrenness, let there be fruitfulness. Yeah. In the place of darkness, let there be light. Yeah. Daddy God, in the place of ashes, let there be beauty. Yeah. Just do what no man can do in our lives. Yeah. And please, Daddy, take all glory. Yeah. Take all honor. Yeah. Take all adoration. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Let your amen be raised into heaven. Yeah. God bless you. To God be the glory. We want to appreciate our Father and the Lord here. Um, you may not believe it in our account. I don't know his name. I have to look at my phone again to remember his name. <laughs> to let you know that uh, the program is not man made, it's all based on friends. I mean, it is God that has brought this thing to be. We only want to appreciate with you. The little I discover in him for the past uh, 72 hours or so that I'm here is that he loves you. This pastor loves his church. You, he loves his church. And, uh, 
And when I say pastor, you know, that way I discovered that there are, there are certain churches that are blessed when you have a pastor who loves you. Suppose you are together for Jesus on behalf of our pastor <laughs> and pastor misses. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And uh, it just occurred to me that what I'm about to happen this weekend, it has not happened to me for a long time. To, for me to be in a place from Friday to Sunday, preaching in a place, it has been a long time. God, the, <laughs> hey, the assignment is so much that it has been possible for regions to ask me to preach twice in a place. And uh, that means you are very unique, sir. <laughs> extremely unique. <laughs> extremely, extremely unique. And I want to thank God for all our pastors. I've met with them in the office. The pastor introduced all of them one by one. We are mightily blessed indeed. And my bishop, I refer to him as my bishop. Uh, that is our pastor Francis. He's the one in charge of prayer in the entire United Kingdom here. God bless you for us. Ah, tonight, tomorrow, and twice on Sunday, I'll be ministering on the theme that is titled The Covenant of Blessings. And because of this, because we are here all this time, I have been directed to occupy two offices simultaneously. And in these two offices also, I will ask you to uh, take your home part in order to have a total package of what the Lord has for you. I will handle, I've been directed by the Holy Spirit to handle the office of a minister. And indeed, God has decided that this is servant that you have brought to this place will minister into your life. Yeah. I'm assuring you of that. There will be a ministration from the throne of grace. You will hear his words. You will hear his words. And because there is a power in the word of God, you will be delivered. Amen. You will be blessed. Amen. You will be set free. Amen. And at the same time, while occupying the office of a minister, he has permitted me also, I mean, the Holy Spirit, to occupy the office of a prophet. So from time to time, you will hear some pronouncement from declaration. And let me tell you, <laughs> When the Lord has ordained such an office for certain people, it means you are blessed indeed. Amen. Mark my words, please. Every pronouncement into your life, within 24 hours, you begin to see manifestation. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So therefore, when we begin to minister, just begin to be sensitive to the pronouncement that will be released into your life. Um, it only, only one of the prayer in, was it last year? The Lord made a pronouncement that somebody in this platform, we didn't see them. Your child, and they happen to be SS, go to do the checkout tomorrow. The Lord say has changed it. And a woman has two children. The two are SS. You told you how what the pastor said? The following day, it happened on the weekend. On Monday, they went there. And they carried out the said the, the woman, according to the same she was shaking. Because two of the children, the SS have returned to Ehi. You know, it's not, it's not a guessing. It's not a man guessing. It's a word. When God prompted the man of God to speak. And this time around, you will hear prophetic entrances Amen. into your life and destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Choir, you can go and sit down. God bless you. Let's put a hand together for our choir. God bless you. God bless you. The covenant of blessings, part one. 
and uh, we are having one, two, three, four messages. So the message today, which is message one, will be titled, The Blessings of Anointing. The Blessings of Anointing. By the time you get to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, you will discover that anointing itself is a covenant. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, and it's a come to pass in that day. That has made it to be a promise. That has made it to be a covenant. That his body will be taken away from your shoulder. And his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Once it has been promised, it has become a covenant. And the Lord is saying the blessing that anointing will release is that yokes will be broken. And I will not speak in Proverbs. We go straight to the point. Because when the Lord has made a promise, it is settled. Like the series we are treating in the prayer ring, we are talking about miracles. And when we ask, what is a miracle? Just consider what the Lord Jesus has said. And uh, and relying on it, then you have it. And whatever God does something like a man of God said, if you can explain it, that is not God. But when you cannot explain it, that is God. So, this anointing we are talking about is what the Lord is about to release in your life now to be a blessing of covenant. In Psalm 92, verse 10, Psalm 92, verse 10. But my horn shall I exalt like the horn of unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh heart. The psalmist there knew the importance of the intervention of anointing from time to time. He said, I'm not young to be anointed once. It should be repeated again and again until I get to the top. That's the reason why in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, 1 Samuel 16, 13, he was right there anointed within his brethren, his brothers. And by the time you get to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 14, 2 Samuel 2, 14, another anointing came upon him and was anointed within his tribe. First, Within the nuclear family, brother, then within the entire tribe. And when the Almighty God wanted to replace him over all the nation, he anointed him again in 2 Samuel chapter 5 or 3. And listen to me attentively. Why do you need fresh anointing tonight? I believe that one way or the other, you have experienced the fine intervention. No doubt about it. You've experienced miracles. No doubt about it. You've had prayers when the Almighty God had decided to set you free. No doubt about it. But fresh anointing is necessary simply because when someone stays too long in a grace, what comes up is a disgrace. Take notice of that. Let me explain that so that when we begin to move forward, you will know the importance of allowing the anointing to break yokes in your life. When somebody is permitted to stay too long in a particular grace, this grace is knocking the door. Anointing must come again and again to break certain yoke that he has been barricading, is lifting or are lifting, so that he can be totally set free. Let me give you an example. The day a lady gets wedded, the day of the wedding, the day, that day is the day of grace of that young girl. Ah, if the governor of your state happened to be right there in the reception, by the time you are dancing to that particular, the governor himself will stand up. It is the day, your day, the day of grace. But do you know, after a year, two, three, four, you are still referring to that lady as a yahoo. 
instead of mama so and so. Is he trusting the love for the fruit of the womb? The grace of that time has become a disgrace. That's the reason why anointing will flow from time to time. The blessing of anointing. If somebody is promoted in the place of work, the day of your promotion is your day. Oh my God, true party and so on and so forth. But after some time, the people you left behind, they're now overtaking you. The grace of that time has become a disgrace, so to say. That's the reason why today, the anointing will settle the case. Amen. I can't hear your hymn louder. Amen. So let us go. Let me leave the whole introduction. Let's go to the re, may I call it this today for what the Lord has for us. This anointing, what is it? What it does, we introduce it. And by the time it's been introduced into your life, one thing concerning God is this. It doesn't hide somewhere. It will manifest himself that you will know this is God. We are refer the blessing of anointing is released. There will be the fine speed. There will be what? The fine speed. You discover that one in First Kings chapter 18, verse 45 to 46. First Kings 18, 45 to 46. Elijah had warned the king he had run fast. It's about to rain. And you see the king being pulled by the king sat on the cart, pulled by several horses. The speed will be like your motorways, of your truck on your motorways. But then, after the king had left, According to that first king chapter 18, 45 and 46. The Almighty God decided that my prophets will not be beaten by the rain also. But they had no bicycle, talk less of my motorbike. Only what he had happened to be his legs. What did God do? The Bible says the Almighty God laid his hand on him. And by the time Elijah began to run, he outran or overtook horses. There is a power somewhere. And the Lord is speaking to you this hour, to somebody here. The anointing to overtake will be released upon you. The strength to move faster than you ever thought will be released upon you. The journey you never thought you will read for years. God is saying before the end of this year, you will dig there. Amen. I can't hear your hymn louder. Amen. I want to show you certain things that he does. And laying his hands on you, he may allow you to walk on your own. And yet, he strengthening that particular strength that you have. And you see you overtaking others. Maybe it's using your certificate. It's using your intelligence. It's using your high IQ. It's using your knowledge and so on and so forth. I say, wow, wow, wow. But at times, he knows. If he permits you to move from your home, you will stay. The enemy will still overcome you. So he, what he does, he will evacuate you. He does it by himself. For example, in John chapter 6, verse 20 to 21. John 6, 20 to 21. He saw the disciple right far away where he was that they were about to be drowned. And what did he do? He began to walk on water. He suspended certain law. The law that says when you stand on water, you will sink. But that time, he suspended the law. May I speak into your life? Whatever the law that must be suspended, for the almighty God to help you, he will suspend it. Amen. And by the time they saw him, they thought he happened to be a ghost. He simply told them, it is said, be not afraid. And the Bible says, they willingly, in verse 21, John chapter 6, 
They willingly receive him to the sheep and listen to what happened and immediately receive what at the place where they were going. Suddenly, something catapulted them. In other words, in our modern language now, the Almighty God evacuated them. The danger is still there, but he quickly threw them away. Stand on your feet, please. Because I believe that God is about to do something in your life right now. Ah, loud and clear, say, my father, my father. My father, my father. From your throne of grace. I need your touch now. Lay your hand on me, Lord. Touch me now. Touch me now. Touch me now. Give me that divine speed that I need now. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Touch me, Lord. I want to experience your speed. Your own divine speed. The blessing of anointing. Oh, yes, Lord. That gives this fine speed. Release upon me. 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 Right now. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Give me the fast speed of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your amen be heard in heaven. Amen. Still remain in that of prayer. Let me explain to you. This young man standing before you is a living witness of the fast speed. Particularly in the area of education. I managed to enter to primary school around 11 years. Before I need the road to secondary school, I was already 22. The first time I entered the university, for the very first time, I was 44. And excuse me, when the Lord picks you up, he gives you his own divine speed. I'm trusting God for you today. If the destiny around you are told you your life has been wasted, permit God to pick you up. Yeah. So with all your heart, you are going to call upon that there is a blessing anointing. Anointing has a blessing in his hand. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. With your everlasting hand. Yeah. With your own divine speed. Carry me. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Carry me, Lord. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Almighty God, carry me. King of glory, carry me. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. And listen to this. I've told you I will minister to you. He has asked me to occupy the office of a minister, ministering to your life. He has something called the fine uh, way of managing the economy of life. He will just manage the economy of your life in his own way. I want to explain so that you can pray. Let's say there's a sister Mary. I'm just using that word. Who ought to have married 10 years ago. But she might be still trusting the love for a life partner this year. If sister Mary had married 10 years ago by now, sister Mary would have to be given back to about three children. So if sister Mary is to marry this year, in other words, going to wait for another 10 years to have her three children. What does God do? He calls your past and your future into a meeting at the arena of the present time. He will now negotiate with two of them. He will say, 10 years of Sister Mary 
of social years. Meet me here. Ten years, Sister Mary, in this form. Meet me here. How God does it, he understands. And I'm telling you the truth. Suddenly, you see Sister Mary getting married in February, year 2023. And before you know it, Sister Mary was pregnant. And by, let's say, December, year 2023, or January, year 2024, Sister Mary gives birth to a triplet. Sister Mary will be able to say, mission accomplished. So I don't know the area of your life that I, they seem wasted. Say, my father, my father. With your own way of creating fulfillment in my life, let your hands touch me today with your own divine speed. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Ye leke reka paparaba. Kaleke leka reka tatarababo. San lacon leke reka tatia. Tarapamba roko toterekesi. Tarapampano kotore kasadaya. Yala reka tete reba prona kalara. Tarapako totere baba baba. San la reke tete. Tankire kalore kasaroma. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Honor be to God. Adoration be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Now lift your, your two hands. Daddy, what you did for Elijah is still available right there before you. And because you are no respecter of any man, what you have done for you've done for someone can be repeated in the life of everyone who needs it. If you didn't lay your hands on Elijah that day, rain will beat him. But when your hands was upon him, he even overtook the horses that had led before he led. Here are your children. That particular Blessing of anointing known as divine speed. Release upon them. Release upon them. Release upon them. Release upon them. Receive it now. 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 From your own observation, you have been saying the time has gone. From the observation of people around you, they've been saying the time has gone. But when God is in charge, he reverses the irreversible. Therefore, all your wasted time, let all be restored in Jesus' name. The way he manages the economy of time, let it be done in your life. That very soon you'll be able to say, Mission accomplished. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Come and say, Amen, Lada. Let someone shout, Hallelujah. Be seated. Number two, as we continue to look at the blessing of anointing, the second thing that blessing does is that it creates new things. Anointing creates new things. In John chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, John chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. There we met a man who had no eyes at all. The entire head is like what you call watermelon. Do you have watermelon here? Uh -huh. You know what is watermelon? No eyes at all. Let's say the head of somebody is like watermelon. No eyes at all. And what did the Lord do? It's part on the ground. Most some. Um, Play soil, play the high where the eyes are supposed to be. 
you go and watch it. But there's something in that particular passage that we must understand which will attract our fervent prayer. Look at verse 6. When he had thus spoken, that is John chapter 9, verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay or spittle. And look at this particular sentence. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. How can you anoint with the clay? Is it oil? No. So let me replace that world with what we can call the right thing. And he created the heart of the blind man with the clay. But instead of saying, and he created, he said, and he anointed. So anointing creates. So wherever you see anointing, what is called creation is taking place. And I don't know what is that thing in your life that will be created that needs to be created tonight. The anointing of the Almighty God will create it. Yeah. I, I can't hear your hymn louder. Yeah. <laughs> I've had testimonies and I've seen miracles that now it should be referred to as a mad mob of the highest order if I begin to doubt God. Anointing creates. It is your turn to experience him. Yeah. I, I, I can't hear your email louder. Yeah. So, what is that thing in your life that must be created in the question? What do you want the Lord to create for you in the question? Ah, let me give you one or two things. I was born a sickler. SS Amini. And the Lord recreated me. Nobody thought I would survive. But he recreated me. Today, I don't take the last time I took draw. When was that? 1977? Away. <laughs> oh, God. He changed my hair, said to him. Now, six years ago, or seven years ago, I made a mistake in Israel. A serious mistake, you. I will never make such a mistake again. I suffered. I was addressing people because every site we visited, the tour guards will tell us all the historical perspective, archaeological perspective, military perspective, and so on and so forth. But the people who point to me, we have about 42 in my group. Pastor Lawali, what is God's perspective of this place? And I will tell them. Because I've been going there again and again. We are going in March now. In May now, that will be about seven time or six time that I've been going to Israel. So I clapped a place. I clapped a place where I addressed them. I was 58 years that time. I wasn't a young kid, though I was still young. When you compare with people who are 80 and so on and so forth. So instead of me to climb down, what did I do? I jumped down. And my, I thank you, you say, ah. I was so fool. I was, I was a foolish boy. And my knife pressed. By the time I got to Nigeria, I couldn't walk again. So they carried me to a particular hospital called Lagoon Hospital. And they carried out the tail. They could not tell the Put me under MRI. That's it. And right there, they detected what happened. And they, they told me in the layman language, you know, I'm a pastor, I'm not into medicine, my wife is 
What power I mean? Or what I know is the Bible. You know? So they say, Pastor. Do we think here and here? That is how they describe it. You know, in the layman language that we read, that's it. Say, between up and here, there's a balloon. So inside that balloon, there's a liquid. By the time you jump, the balloon bursts, and that balloon, I mean, the balloon was pressed and burst, and the liquid escapes. Say your bone up is touching the bone down. So you require what you call plastic surgery. That time I confessed my sin. <laughs> I spoke in my mother tongue. I forgot English. I said, the not me alone. The Dereni me, Mogo, Mogo, I can't I mean, I spoke in my mother tongue so that I could express myself, because I don't know what. How can I express the Dereni me in English? I'm a fool, a very fool. Have mercy on me. Excuse me. He creates. Suddenly, I didn't read you on a book. It was in a dream. It was in a trance. He laid his hand on me. I could not see the hands, but he laid it on me. And I could see the flow, very cool. The way it's flowing, I felt it. From head to toe. And suddenly the pain disappeared. For the first time, for the first time, I, I you know, I lifted the leg. This was the leg. Ah, I do like this. I do like this. Then I stood up. I bent like this, gently. Ah. Then I do like this. I don't know. They have already prepared my bed in the world where they are going to admit me. When the nurses who have been rolling my trolley, this uh, stretcher and so on and so forth, almost three hours, when they saw me, they all knelt down. Pastor, please pray for us. <laughs> from that day. But I don't want to jump again. <laughs> but from that day. So it creates. It gives me a brand new socket. So we are talking about this God. The almighty God. The king of glory. They discharge a young, a young boy in the United States of America. It's a, it is a particular testimony on prayer ring. Age 41, that's your man. They had to ask the parent to carry him down home so that few days he would die. Stage 4 cancer, they call it. Stage 4 cancer. They say it should go and die at home. It should go and die. And right there, they heard about the God who creates that if your body has been totally damaged, he had the spare part in heaven. He can replace it with brand new one. Within one week, they say that he's heating up all the body died. And within Two weeks, three weeks, the boy was okay. With no trace of cancer again in his system. I'm not a medical man, but I asked my wife after I've read the testimony on prayer. I said, Madam, what do these you people refer to as stage four cancer? And this is the answer my wife gave. They have not buried him because he was still breathing. That's how my wife answered. They have not buried him because he was still breathing. The, the, my wife says, everything concerning the system has been Stand on your feet. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He touched me. He touched me. For a job. That art now feel my soul. Jesus. Something happened. And I know he touched me and made me 
He touched me, he touched me. Matarabababa, he touched me. Oh, yes, I am. But I do that I feed my soul. Ay, 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 something happened. Oh, I know it touched me. Say, my father, my father, my father, my father. Tonight, tonight, with your creative hands, your creative come and touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Whatever must be created in my heart, in my life, in my body, in my organ, in my system, create it now. Pray that prayer with all your heart. <laughs> Tarabako to Tulikisa Tarababa Carabaco to Tulikisa Tia Carababa Ayala Kanda Casante Riba Baba 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 Orica Larabaco to Tulikisa Tarabaco to Tibo Ayala Caricata Riba Baba Nicatane Orica Larabaco to Riba Baba Baba Caricata Tarababa Recasanta Baba Terica Larabaco to Riba Badi Casanda Tarabaco to Riba Baba Baba Oye Calarabaco to Riba Baba Baba Karakata tarabako to the Kasanda Yaya. Karakata tarabako to the Katakaya Baba. Papa parabako to the Bakat and the Baba Katani. Terika larabako to the Bakata Tarababa. Parabako to the Bakasanda Yaya Rababa. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your two hands. Daddy. Someone needs your touch now. And that fellow I've been saying, this is the hour, this is the day I've been waiting for to experience your touch. The touch of wholeness, the touch of healing, the touch of deliverance. I have presented you to your children now that the power in you known as anointing creates. Wherever, medically speaking, the target damaged, or no hope, or incurable, or terminal, prove your whole mightiness now. Whatever was not there, when you create this fellow who stand his rate up right now, that he trying to solve it now, cancel it in Jesus' name. It is written, every three our father not planted will be uprooted. Every plant the Lord that not planted your life, we uproot it now in the name of Jesus. It is written, stranger, we hear the word of your power. And with trembling, they will chase out of their kidney plates. Every stranger, abolating your life and system, we chase them out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen louder. Amen. Be seated, God bless you. Another blessing of anointing is that it provides security. Blessing secures the life and destiny of people. In Psalm 89, verse 20 to 23, Psalm 89, verse 20 to 23, the Almighty God speaks, I have found defeat in my servant. And what did God do immediately? He discovered defeat. He said, with my holy oil, have I anointed him. 
with whom my hands have been established, and my arm also has strengthened him. And why? The enemies are not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foe before his face and plague them that hate him. Immediately, the Almighty God discovered David. He discovered this one. Let me protect him. Let me secure his destiny for him. And what did God do? He released anointing, lay his hand on him. Any man, any woman, listen to me attentively, who is ready to fulfill destiny, you will be ready for battle. If all what you want to do in life is to just send your pan stally build and buy a very big uh, accommodation, enjoy yourself, you are not uh, ready to impart life. You don't have any battle to fight. But if you want to leave something by hand as a legacy, after you must go, if you don't want to be forgotten. I mean, after you must go, be ready for battle. Either you like it or not, success attracts battles. Either in your chosen career or in the ministry. And I'm telling you, anytime you plan to climb, be ready for the law of gravity to pull you down. They are there. They are there. And listen to me attentively. Immediately you are ready to become someone. The Lord has a way of protecting your life. And what he does is by anointing you. You remember the prayer of Jabez? According to Paul Chronicle, you remember? After he had said, We have blessed me indeed, thou this and that. Suddenly he said, And let your prayer be with me, so that we not have the evil will not fall upon me. You are, I know that you have been dreaming. Great dreams, mighty dreams. The only one who can sustain your life is God through the instrumentality of his anointing. I was speaking to somebody today and I said, whoever well, is ready to make a mark will be ready to die. If you are not ready to die, you can move on. And listen to me attentively. If all what you want to do in life is to hit records. To continue to do what someone else had done before. No problem. You just say you are doing it like. But you want to break record. You want to make a mark. To distinguish yourself from uh, the way it has been, uh, been done by others. So that you, they cannot compare people with you. You will be ready for battle. Nothing goes for nothing. And I've yet to see anyone who wants the battle of life, who had won the battle of life without the assistance of the Almighty. And that one, why in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10, see what the Almighty God says. The adversary of the laws have been broken to pieces. Out of heavens are he turned upon them. The Lord has joined the hands of the earth and is has given strength unto his king and exalt the hand of his anointed. Anointing is an investment. Where there is no thing to invest, anointing won't be there. Um, you all call, many of you come from Africa either from Ghana, or from Nigeria, or from whatever. In Africa, there are classes. The poor, the rich. I don't want to mention streets so that I will not be arrested. Because this message is broadcast all over the world now. 
There are places where I come from. If you don't put the door there, nobody looks at you. I mean, you can open your door in the night. But I know some places, the fence, the fence itself, the wall is higher than their house. And if you dare talk the wall by certain time, the alarm will not allow you to sleep. Their dog is eating better food than what I eat because of the treasure that is there. Before the anointing will call upon him, he will find out what has that man got to offer in God's kingdom. You come to church on Sunday, dance and sing, and you go away. You have never been doing anything for God. And you say, God, anoint me. God, we ask you what for? What do you need for? To warm the bench on Sunday? Or what? Immediately you are ready to be carriers of God's wealth. In what? In teaching others, in delivering others, in setting others free. And you want to be what they call the source of blessing to your generation. You see, anointing will appear. And listen to this. These signs, the Almighty God said, follow them that believe. Say, follow. Understand the word follow. It doesn't sit down with people. So anointing will never accompany with people who sit down. Those people are on the going. Moving on, moving on, moving on from one level to another. And listen to me. If there's no departure, there can be no arrival. I called my wife that have arrived in Manchester when we landed there because I had departed from somewhere. And every departure is a risk. Take notice of that. Every departure is what? I travel a lot. I've never, never once, not even by me, once, here my wife, maybe we're about to take off all the girls, close the door, and my wife said, praise the Lord, never. So we say, God will go with you, God will guide you, because every departure is a risk. But by the time I land, oh, praise the Lord. There can be no praise the Lord if there's no arrival. And there can be no arrival without a departure. So if you are just trying to safeguard your life without taking risk, you may not see God in action. Anointing will follow. I've discovered defeat. And with my holy oil, have I anointed him. And for that reason that I'm taking the risk to, pro to produce my kingdom, to do it the way it ought to be, to reign over my people in righteousness, I will support him. As you are living here today, find out what is your role in God's kingdom. What is your first met in God's kingdom? The difference between the past and now it's in those days, every member, they are investor in God's kingdom. Today, we are trying to get what God has. We are not ready to give to God certain things. I'm trusting the almighty God today that by his grace, he will anoint you. Amen. I can't hear your email louder. Amen. I can't hear your email louder. This weekend, we pay you a visit Amen. in a glorious way, Amen. in a mighty way, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to pray. The prayer now, you don't need to stand up now. Ask the question, what do I do for God? Since I've been a Christian, what role have I been playing? Many are there to criticize their pastor. He doesn't do it well. What do you, 
What do you do yourself? And that fellow, any time I hear people criticizing you know, others, say, okay, do it the right way. Don't criticize. And don't do it that light. Like do it the right way. Let us see it. Call upon the Lord. I need your anointing. But I've discovered right now that anointing will not be released on empty vessel. It is when I'm ready to do something for you. Lead me to what I will do in your kingdom. From today onward, establish me, O oh God. You told all the people you anointed what they are to do. Lead me, guide me, direct me on what I'm to do in your kingdom. And I promise you, Lord, I will take the risk. Because I know he's taking the risk that where you are anointed is waiting for me. To protect me, to guide me, to lead me, O oh God. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Oh, yes, Lord. We are talking about the blessing of the covenant. The almighty God is ready for us today. That in the covenant that may be taught, he will bless us. Pray, 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 pray. Enough is enough, Lord. I don't want to continue like this. I don't want to be ordinary Christian any longer. I want to be able to do something for you. The time is gone. The time has gone. And the kingdom of the enemy are fighting to and they will go to pull down the kingdom of God. I'm ready to raise the banner from today. I'm ready to raise the banner so that you can be king of glory, the Lord of lords in the midst of your people. Help me, Lord. The Bible says, I have found David. I have found David. And for that reason, I have anointed him. Hear my, O God. And let your name be glorified in my life. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Father, whenever you find a man, you prove yourself as the Almighty God. Today we cry out, Lord God of Elijah, but we have never thought of it to think about the Elijah of God. We pray, Lord, that every one of us here will become the Elijah of God. So that God of Elijah will prove himself in our lives. Amen. I decree right now, by the authority of the word of God, your role in the, in, in the household of God will no more be vacant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for you that no one will take your place. You will occupy your seat. Amen. You will play your role. Amen. And the anointing of the Almighty God will see you through. Amen. The name of the Lord be glorified in your life. Amen. Your life will never be empty. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, You will not come to the Lord in vain. Amen. You will have an assignment to carry out. Amen. A particular thing to do for God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, Your life will not be empty. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come and say him louder. Amen. Let's move on concerning the blessing of this anointing. Other thing that he does that he promotes. Anointing does what? Promotes. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17, 1 Samuel 15, 17, the Lord told King Saul, are you not little in your sight when the Almighty God himself lifted you up, anointed you as king over Israel? You are so, you are nobody, nobody knew you, but immediately the anointing of God was released upon you. The Lord lifted you and you became king. Anointing promotes. And I will tell you a secret. I will told, I've told you right when we started that I will occupy the office of a minister. I believe you have been blessed already. Yeah. Listen to me attentively. 
Because anointing promotes, and promotion can attract pride. And many, many people, they have the seed of pride in their life. That is why they have not been anointed. Hmm. Immediately, the anointing came upon King Saul. The pride in him surfaced that God himself could not control him any longer. Before the anointing, he began to hide himself. Eh? He want to do what? When he had that one, he ran away to let you see the level of his humility. He took Prophet Samuel to the table. He was hiding himself in a particular store. Eh? What do you people mean? But immediately the anointing and promotion came. Nobody could tame him any longer. I mean, prophet wanted to help him. You mean what? You mean sacrifice breath at that time to obey? I brought a wounded down. I said, no. The prophet said, okay. I leave you. I believe you will repent. He said, eh? you are going to where? You won't honor me before these people. You are not going to anywhere. He tore the dress, the robe, the prophet. I said, ah, you are finished. And that ended him. That when madness came upon him. The mercy of God has not allowed some people to be anointed. Do. Because if the anointing of God came upon them, they were all mad. As we are living here today, bury what is called pride. Bury it. Bury it. Bury it. <laughs> By the time you get to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 11, 1 Samuel 10, 11, the day Samuel met King Saul, he even kissed him. Imagine that elevation that to make the prophet at that level to kiss ordinary young man. Ah! Imagine I made that you now and that you now kissed me. The entire world we hear. I will show that particular something to everybody. Kiss me. I say, you know, we are so close that we kiss ourselves. <laughs> I remember my wife when we were cutting. Mommy Jo saw her right there. Mommy Jo was entering the camp and I had not arrived. We were caught. We are just cutting down. We never married. But Mommy Jo knew her as my friends. Say, come, 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 come. Mommy Jo took her home and uh, cooked for her. All the state. Oh, I said, guess what? I hate him, Mommy Jo's house. Um, for a prophet to okay, kiss a young man, see the elevation. But pride came. I want you to please kill pride, kill it. Fin, fin. Let it die. Totally. Remove pride. What is changing the church today? Why they are not in an offer? Why the blessing of our not are not there? Pride. Pride. The little headache they can hear. He say, oh, are you talking to like this? How many headache have you? <laughs> many, many today, daddy joke, I not even control them. Because right there in their locality there. <clears throat> in the prayer room. Prayer room. As I'm talking to you now, we are having 10 test fires every day. 10 test fires every day. And now we're talking about testimony. When I'm reading it myself, I will read it again. Is it true? For example, the one this morning. Somebody forgot the food on the fire. And he came back after two hours. Not only that the fire, I mean the food didn't burn, but he discovered that as fire is burning, the pot itself 
people becoming cooler. Have you ever had such a thing? He said the pot was. <laughs> and God spoke to me, he said, that's what I did for say that massacre that made me go. I just turned that flame to cool weather. That's why the air could not burn. I mean, miracles. And we have lying up 10 testifiers every day till the 9th of March. Now, after that one, I check the testimony already that we have not downloaded or uploaded at all from the email about nine, is it 67, about 73, 71 testifiers. In other words, for months now we have testimony lined up. Paul said, what have you that you have not been given? But pride will not allow the anointing. Make up your mind from this moment. We are talking about blessing or covenant. That blessing is there. But God wants you to enter the covenant with him. Will you still be yourself? See, honor me. Are you still be there? Will you not look down on people for I give you the particular anointing? I was in a particular boat. I don't know whether the man was joking or was telling the truth. He told this, uh, no, in the Farang area, somewhere in South South Nigeria, inside that boat, I mean, speedboat. He said, do you know I've entered to the universe, I mean, to the Bible course? Eh? You've gone to the Bible course? He said, yes. So he says, what? Ah, all those people who are just talking now to me, I want to get power to deal with them. That's the reason why I have gone to the Bible college, to deal with people. Take notice of this. The anointing is there, ready to flow. And this week, it will flow. Yeah. God spoke to me, do you know? He said, do you know why? I have blocked or pegged or what he referred to last. I've laid embargo on blessing or some husband at home. Either the little they have now they are thinking of dealing with their wife. He said, the reason why I have blood the blessing of some of my daughters as wives at home, the little they have now, they don't respect their husband again. Until the pride is uprooted, we cannot see God in action. By his grace, hey, the way the almighty God anointed defeat, because what he called pride in him is totally uprooted. The same way the Lord will anoint us. Yeah. I want you to pray. This prayer will require your fervent prayer. Let's stand on our feet. We are going to key every seed of pride now. We want to command it to die. Loud and clear. Say, Father. Father. In, the Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Every seed of pride. In my life. What are you waiting for? Die. 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 Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. You kill a rabba pore kasara. La la katete reke tatarabba baba. Aya la kere katete repopone katatarabba. Let the spirit of pride die. Let the spirit of pride die. Let the spirit of pride die in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Die now. Pride die. Pride die. Pride die. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say amen louder. Therefore, you are going to pray, say, Father, Father. Upon, my life, upon my life, let your anointing flow. Your anointing. Pray that prayer now. <laughs> now that we have got rid, we gotten rid of praise of pride. Let your anointing flow. 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 
Let anointing flow. Let anointing flow. Let your anointing flow. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daddy, we have discovered the reasons why the power of hood is more or less not in oppression. Those people, our forefather, the patriarchs, they were down to the heart concerning dealing with God and humanity. They were nobody. And the anointing of God made them to become somebody. Today, Daddy, we pray. Uh, this particular weekend is a unique one. Because from here, you are producing lions and eagles. Whatever, therefore, will not allow your anointing to flow. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Every pride in our life that will not allow the anointing of God to flow, you are dead in the name of Jesus. For this reason, Daddy, release your anointing. Release your anointing. Amen. Daddy, release your anointing. Amen. Almighty God, release your anointing. Amen. And let it flow. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come and say amen louder. Amen. Let's have one more number um, be seated now. It's also that thing we are talking about the blessing of anointing. Is that thing that takes over hopeless situations? That the blessing we have, there are certain hopeless situations when the anointing flows, it takes over every hopeless situation. And we get that one in Ischia 37, verse 9. To 10. Ezekiel 37, verse 9 to 10. You can read all the truth from verse 1. You remember the, the story of dry bones. Take notice of the sequence of events there. Can this bone live? The Lord started the interrogation. <laughs> The mouth of God, you can you are the only one can tell. Then God began to say, prophesy to the bones. And he prophesied to the bones. You can see bones began to locate its counterpart and full skeleton of human being were formed. Take notice. God spoke to the prophet again. Prophesy that they cover with flesh. And suddenly you see all the bones. Cover with the flesh of human being, everybody, human being, our body, we are all lifeless. If you check the Bible again, God didn't tell the prophets, prophesy life into it. No matter how anointed, nobody has been given power to produce life. The only one who is in charge of life is the Holy Spirit. What did God tell the prophet, therefore? He said, call the wind to blow. Let the wind blow. <laughs> and he said, oh, wind, blow. And the wind began. And breathed into all the bones. I mean, all the flesh, and they came up. Wherever the anointing flows, hopeless situation is taken care of. And that is the next thing we are going to do. We are here to have a covenant with our God. Covenant of blessing. And in a moment from now, we will allow the Holy Spirit to move his own way. I don't know the stake you are here. 
that is known as hopeless situation. Because of the assignment that the Lord has used our Father and the Lord to place on me, I've exposed to so many things that I myself, I will need faith to pray. You have presented your matter to me, and I will need faith also to pray. And, uh, you know, we don't, we, we pretend before you, you don't phone our eyes when you come. No matter how tough the situation, we smile. But in the corner of our house, we say, oh God, what is this? Then we know somebody who is in charge of life, who can impart life who handles what is called hopeless situation. His name is the Holy Spirit. He just said over to you. You have heard that it's you again and again saying, we pray a simple prayer. How many of us have heard that it's you? And we pray a simple prayer. We tell you the secret of that simple prayer. It's Lord, this is a situation that no man can handle over to you. Yeah. That's the meaning of simple prayer. And the Lord who is in charge of life arises and begins to do what no man can do. By the time you get to that particular verse, you see how God breaks into those bones. What I'm going to do now is that I will step aside and I will have the Holy Spirit himself to act in his own way in your life. You are here to have a destiny with your maker. And I've seen God in action. Koya, can you come to your stand? Your band set, is it electronics? Who is the drummer? It's not electronics. So let the let the, say, Jasmine, or what you call, let the, that big one be minimal. It make him pong, 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 when I had been praying the other time. Uh, and the guests at me here, from time to time, because I may change your beat. Um, my choir, no soprano, no tenor. It means natural something. And uh, how we will lead, you will respond, please. All right? God bless you. So we all stand, please. Thank you, Father. Osas, Osa, please be at a lot because some people may need your help. Because when the Holy Spirit is moving, some people may need their spiritual divine operation. So please make sure that you attend to people if there are people like that in the congregation. God is attending to a situation that either medically speaking, physically speaking, maritally speaking, whatever form, that say this is hopeless. This is hopeless. This is hopeless. That's what God is dealing with right now. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. May the living water, Lord, of my soul, choir sing. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. And an every situation. One more time, let that live in water. Let that live in water. Our Jesus, Holy Spirit, I 
Somebody say, Our Father, oh, call on Jesus, Jesus. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, someone needs your touch now, someone needs your intervention now, let your wind blow, let your wind blow, let your wind blow, Holy Spirit, 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 someone needs you now. Matere katatara bakosote, yeleke re katatara bo, paleke tete. Yes Lord, 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 yes Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, intervene, intervene, intervene. Right now, right now, right now. Someone needs you now. Someone needs you now. Ye rekata taraba po. He leke rekata taraba. Haya leke teterebo. Malaka taterebo. Oye kere leko rekata taraba. Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Begin to revive the reversible. Manifest your power. Yes, Lord. Intervene now. In the affairs of your people. Poreka tereka sataye. Yima reke loko reka tatara. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Silence, please. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Someone needs your touch now. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the life of some people, let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. Stretch forth your hand, somebody, like someone receiving something. That blessing that the Holy Spirit provides, receive it now. 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 Glory speaking. Let the Holy Spirit set to your case. Physically. Spiritually. Maritally. Career-wise. Business-wise. Academically. 
Let the Holy Spirit settle your case. And wherever you have been struggling before now, from this moment onward, you will struggle no more. Receive that blessing. Receive that anointing. Receive that enablement. Receive that power. 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 From this moment, your life will never remain the same. It is settled. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Stay in the attitude of worship. The only one who has all the power to save is Jesus. But how you've been invited to this place today, or you've been coming to church, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. The best gift you can give to your life and destiny is Jesus. So wherever you are, or you are watching online right now, and you've not surrendered your life to Jesus, this is the right time. If you are here physically, all eyes closed, please. Kindly lift up your hands. I would love to pray for such people. And those online, do likewise. Because Jesus is the only one who can actually make you to fulfill destiny. Without him, the anointing can never come. And it's the anointing that can break the yokes in your life. So if you are here, raise up your hand. I would love to pray for you. This is the moment of destiny. Those online, keep on lifting your hand, please. So I want to pray. Father, we want to thank you for the gift of salvation. Take all glory. Those are watching, those are here who are ready right now to surrender their life to you. I pray, Lord, that according to your promise that says, whoever comes to you, you will know why it's cast out. Please let your blood cleanse their sins away. Have their names written in the book of life. And the great will serve you to the end, release upon their lives in Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray those online, you will see the contact details on the screen after the program. Make sure you contact the pastor. God bless you. Tomorrow, by good grace, you just lay the foundation to the of May. I call it introduction. Call, invite somebody rather, and make sure you yourself you are here. I'm going to have the an extraordinary presence of the Lord tomorrow in our midst. By this place, of grace of God. If you have been blessed at all, can I hear you shouting a resounding hallelujah? hallelujah.